I guess we can start. So, as I was saying, uh, I call it how to do the splits even if you're not flexible. And if you were listening to the conversation, uh, it's about Drupal configuration management ideas. So I am Carlos Ospina. I'm a technical account manager for Apple since 2015. Been with Drupal since 2012. Uh, I'm involved with the Drupal community here in Latin America, and now Spain. Uh, and I'm a Taekwondo instructor. So since I'm a martial artist, that's why the title made sense to me. Because if all we try to do is split, which I cannot ever do. <laughs> so. Uh, this is a very basic, and as I was saying, I've, I've done this presentation in different times. Since we have configuration splits and, and, and configure split module and, and configuration. And the reason I keep doing it is because as a technical account manager for Aquila, I still have customers coming to me with a deploy problem. And then we cannot deploy, everything is broken, we are done, help me. Let me see your logs. Right there, it says that the configuration cannot be important. Did you do something in production? <laughs> oh. <laughs> and then I go and see that, oh, thank you, that the splits are not well done. So actually, they want to have a special configuration in production, but it's not into the configuration management. So of course, if it's different, if you use Acura, used to maintain BLT going away, but one of the philosophies that it does that you should do is import configuration a couple times on deployment. So I import configuration. Configuration gets imported. I import configuration again. Sometimes your configuration that you have on your disk and the configuration that your Drupal has is exactly the same, but the YAML file has one line yes. difference. So your configuration will never import. And your deploy may fail. Because it's an error. I could never do the configuration import. Still get stuff to get imported. Um, and it's stuff like that that still gets people. Senior, senior developers. I've seen like it's just configuration management. But how do splits work? So I keep renewing this presentation. So we're going to talk about the configuration. Then we're going to talk about the what is configuration in general, you know, what's the difference between content and configuration a little bit. Uh, configuration and storage, what is configuration, where is a store, and how it works. Uh, basic demo, so we're going to see a little bit of configuration, I'm going to export configuration, see what gets exported, have an idea, make a change, export, so we can see exactly what, what theoretically is going to happen. Uh, then we're going to talk about the splits and why are they good. Uh, and, and of course, uh, talk about the challenges and opportunities of configuration. What I see as challenges, just be careful, be aware of this. You need to do, you, you need to be aware of this, or your configuration is gonna give you heart ache and headache. And some split examples. Configuration split examples. I'm not gonna try to do the splits here. Uh, we're gonna talk about ignoring and excluding, and I added other config modules that I have found lately that I found there interesting, that you guys may want to try, but I'm not sure they're completely stable yet. I, I haven't used them. So anyway, let's talk about configuration. What is configuration and what is content? So when I share this, this is the link to Drupal.org where they talk about what is configuration and what is not. But in general terms, if there is one of them, probably configuration, except for some special cases, web forms. And if there are many, probably it's content. This is not exact, because we have other types of things that actually are configuration, and you have many blocks, I believe, some blocks. So configuration is like user roles, content type, the article, uh, taxonomy vocabulary is block and custom block, but not the instances of that block. Sometimes not of the custom block. Uh, and content is the actual users, the actual articles, the items in the taxonomy. 
or an instance of a custom block. So you, you can go there, you just keep that in mind so you know, I did this work, do I need to export configuration? The reality is, yes. But as we're going to talk a little, you have to be aware of what you're working, because for some reason, sometimes, when you export configuration, something else was changed while you were testing. And probably you don't want that configuration to be part of, of, of your strategy. So configuration and storage. I, 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 I keep bringing this up because I love the story of how, and I don't know who knows how Drupal 8, 9, 10 ended up having configuration port and export and having configuration in the hard drive and in the database. No? From the beginning, 2014, 2015, the idea of Drupal 8 is like, we are going to use YAML. This is amazing. We're trying to get rid of the famous module, features. We don't want features anymore. So what is the best way? YAML is a good format. We're going to have the configuration in YAML format. Each module, each part of Drupal is going to have a configuration, blah, 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 what we have today. And we want this. What was the advantage of feature? You could version uh, control your configuration. So we want to version control the configuration in case something changed. Remember Drupal 7? Who changed it? <laughs> <laughs> we wanted that. So we're going to put a work configuration in the hard drive. Then reality check. Hard drives are slow. That wasn't good. We tested it, it did not work. Drupal was low and the performance was bad because it was trying to read the configuration directly from the hard drive. Actually, today, and I don't know how to do this, I haven't researched it lately, but there is a way that you can put in settings.php and actually have your Drupal using the configuration directly from the hard drive. But you better have a really fast SSD in your hosting. But anyway, that's, that's what YAML came for. So the decision at the end, we're going to create a configuration management system where I can have my configuration in the hard drive and then bring it up to my site in the database, which will be faster and will have memcache if you want it to be faster, right? Handle it in the database. As I mentioned, with the, the Drupal community decided on the YAML format because it's very straightforward and very beautiful. I like it, you know, it's very organized. And we came with two basic terms. Staged configuration and active configuration. So here's where your configuration management strategy should start. Understanding that there is a staged configuration and there is map active configuration. What is a stage? Uh, a stage is your config folder, it's your code. Whatever files of configuration that you have in your code, the one that you exported when you finished your website, that is a stage. The configuration that is in the database that your Drupal is actually using, that's active configuration. Now, if you go to Drupal and I need to open this, so give me one second, because I, hey, I need to find the mouse. <laughs> Somebody sees the mouse? Mouse should be, there it is. I need an extra tab, and I need to config presentation delay. Boom. Okay. If you come here, and in development, you see config synchronization. There is no difference. But if you come here, you have differences. You're going to see a stage and active. When you ask for what's the difference, you're going to see a stage and active. And it's going to show you if there is one line or two lines difference over there. So, so basically, if, if I were to change anything here, and let's go with the easy one, because we're still going to do that at some point. I should. Oh, that's weird. I have an exported configuration, but let's see. Maybe if I save that, just to change the configuration and come back here. 
Yeah, I haven't exported the original configuration, but we'll see it later. It's going to show you stage and active. So stage is the folder, your code. Active, the database. <coughs> now, I'm not going to go into slideshow because this is annoying. Where, where, where was I? Here, here, no, here, right? Um, the running configuration is active. That is what is actually running on your side, no matter what you have in your code. What is running in your side is the active configuration. It can be different. If there was an update in a module and they changed the schema, added a key, took a key out, probably your active is not going to have that key or it's going to have that extra key. Not, that is not going to be in your code. So the stage and active will be different. Active is the one run. What is the canonical source of configuration? The canonical source, the main source of configuration should be your stage configuration. So what is the last configuration, the one that works in production, that makes my site work correctly in tick, is a stage. So if somebody goes into production and change the content type and add a field and, 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 and create five blocks and um, change all the configuration, it doesn't matter. The one in the code should be imported next deployment and you're back on your release and your real release. So the canonical source is a stage. And that would be the next, that's why it's so important to understand, that would be the actual first step in configuration management. The boss is a stage, is your code, because then you can version. Then you can know, and, but who the hell turned off caching? Oh, that was this developer, because it's in the code. Or if somebody does it in production, don't worry, just import configuration, boom, fixed it. Um, so let's do the, the, the first basic demo. It's here on the, let's get out of this. I have my folder. I just have a, a, a brand new Drupal 10 with Umami and DDEF, just for the web. It's easy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to export configuration. I just installed Umami this morning over there. Nothing has changed. Um, the first thing that I want to do is to tell Drupal because I, if I do not tell Drupal where the configuration is, it's going to put it somewhere else. It's going to put it in the file folder inside like a hash uh, weird folder. And there is a chance that it can be reached out. I mean, if a hacker is good enough, I mean, if they make it to your folder and can see the configuration, you, you should keep it outside your web. But if a hacker gets to there, I mean, you're already hacked. But this just make it, makes it, you know, easier to change your site. So you want to move it. Uh, so you want to go to your sites default. Oh, yeah, web. And you want to find this entry. Where is there? It is. Can you guys see that line? And it's probably small, right there. This is the settings config config scene directory. I'm telling it. You know the default Drupal recommended project puts core and everything inside a web folder. So I'm actually saying dot dot, which means outside the web folder, in a config, in the folder name config, inside of that one, I'm going to have default. So in default is where all the configuration is going to be. So if I get out of here, I need to save, and I go back, 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 and I go to the config folder. We're going to see something that we're going to talk in a second. I have a default and an env folder. Env is for those split that we're going to talk later about for my local, for my prod, for my dev, for my test server, 
because you may want to have different configuration. Perfect examples of those is, do I enable devel or not? Do I have caching on or not? And shield, I'm already out, or do I need to shield protect my production side so nobody goes in yet? Uh, but if you go into the default folder, there's nothing. Why? Because I have not exported configuration. So let's do that. Do that. It's a drush command. Cx. I mean, you're gonna find it in the internet, so I don't even put it there. This is this is basic. But once I do that, it's gonna export the configuration. It's not asking anything because there was nothing. So configuration is like I don't have to ask you anything. I mean, if you want configuration, you have nothing now. I have all my configuration that was active in the database copied as files in my folder. And this is my stage configuration. And this is my source of truth. So if I make changes locally in the database, they're not part of my release cycle, they're not part of my site until, boom, I make them reflect here. Now. If I go to the site that we were talking about, and actually we'll come and do a little change in performance. Let's turn off catching. Now Drupal is actually going to tell me, hey, Stage and active are not exactly the same. This file is different. So I can go and see, like, what the hell? That's what's happening. So which one is the hard drive? Active. No, stage. Stage is the hard drive. So in the stage, in my code, I have 60 seconds. But I just change it to zero. So what is telling me, this is what I have. I, Drupal, have this. But your code, what you told me in my configuration should live, has this, this different. What's going on? Let's say that's what I want. I actually want the zero for now, right? So what I'm going to do is, if I can, yeah, it's over there, so, sorry. Do another CAX, and I'm gonna, let me see if I can. Uh, uh, uh. And I believe it will be better. Preferences? Maybe you can zoom in a little bit too. Uh. Yeah, I don't know how to zoom in here, so there is a little, little chance that I just messed everything up, so what I'm gonna do is. What do you know how to do it? Make this bigger. Oh, so beautiful. <laughs> if um, size is perfect, okay. So when I run this, it's gonna tell me, okay, we have a change in system performance. I'm gonna update it, I'm exporting, careful, right? I'm exporting, whatever, CDX. That's because what I have in active was the end of my job. I wanted to turn off caching. Now I need it to, make, to be part of my code. But we have the other example as well, so I'm gonna say no here. And maybe it was the other way, like, what the heck, who turned off caching? No, we need to turn this on. So what I'm gonna do is, since my source of truth is stage, I'm going to import configuration. And it's going to tell me the same. Well, system performance, everything is the same. So doesn't matter. But system performance is different. I paid attention. I went and see the configuration. I went and see the config synchronization. What is the difference? So I know this is what I want. I'm going to tell it yes. 
How do I test that I'm okay if I want to? I export. And just say, like, it's the same. Like, yeah, don't worry, nothing. That little step is important because sometimes, as I said, my configuration stage can, be, can have been done with a different version of the module and sometimes they just change the schema and the change is the order of the lines. It's not even values. And then configuration management will get all confused and say that your configuration is always different. So in those cases, you have to actually go and change your file to reflect what is inactive. But because whatever is inactive is actually after go from the install hook and the schema part of Drupal and the module loads, whatever it needs to load that is extra. Um, so let me see, I have some other things that I wanted to do in this demo and I'm pretty sure I have it written down. So that's via Drush, right? Uh, I can do it via the UI if I want to. So let's just look a little bit at that. When I'm on the configuration synchronization, right, I could, and it's not going to show now because I imported and now it's all the same, but assume the change is there, I could say either I'm going to import what I have in my hard drive or I'm going to export. And this step is very important, and I'm going to mention it a little bit better later, but I call it myself like surgically importing or exporting a piece of configuration. Why? Because sometimes I need to do that. I don't want to mess with the whole configuration. I just realized the lines are backwards. It keeps telling me the lines are backwards, so configuration is different. I come here, it shows me the differences, I understood. So let's say I wanted to export the configuration. I can go for a single item. Yes, ma'am. That happens a lot when you are merging or rebasing and if something gets in the way and it happens. Yeah, so I, I look for the configuration. And in reality here, I, I, I really advise to go into this area and familiarize on how the configuration is organized. You have different types, simple configurations like system performance. You have configurations like views, it's a type of configuration. So if you want to export a view, you need to go and find the configuration type view and then you see your views. And there are configurations that are grouped in something, there are other simple configurations. I'm not going to teach you that or tell you because it's so much. So just Really, if you want to develop a good configuration management, just kind of familiarize with that, and, and, and you're going to see that, you see, there are different configuration types, date formats, content type, image styles, language, media type, responsive image style, role, blog, base field, action, whatever is not in here, is simple configuration. Views, workflow, text format, taxonomy vocabulary, etc. So, in the example we were doing, somebody, we, we changed the, the performance, the caching in our active configuration in Drupal side, UI, and we want that to be part of the actual configuration. <coughs> if I do a config export and then I see a bunch of files that I have no idea what happened, right? And I've been playing with Drupal. I've been moving stuff in the configuration. A lot of stuff got changed, but I know my job in this ticket was to make sure the, config, the system performance was this value. I can surgically export this configuration. I have the name of the file here that will be in my folder, in my default folder, and I have the content. So I simply can go here copy, go to my terminal, find that file, and just replace the content. If I have an exported configuration before, this will be like this, right? So I just Either go and see the configuration and make the changes, it's okay. If, if, if all I want is to do is edit the value and make it okay, 
just keep in mind the YAML format. So make sure the, this is uh, the, 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 the column makes uh, like a section, two spaces. If you do three spaces, it's going to crack and it's not going to work. It will. Or you can, I mean, depending on your editor, I'm, I love V. So I just go 10,000 DD, bye bye, insert, paste. The one that I brought from my active. And now I have the same configuration here. Save the file. And now if I export configuration, it should be the same. No differences. That's surgically. So you can do it both ways. You can work with um, with, with um, the the drush command, or you can work with the UI. Um, I don't have it here, and I can find it in a second and show you later. But I learned recently, after I did this presentation in, with a customer, that there is one command in configuration management where I actually can come and tell Drush to change one entry. So I can tell it to change in performance uh, cache.page.maxh to zero. And a specific value. But I can't remember the command right now. <laughs> and I don't want to look for it because we have so much to cover. So at the end, if we have time. But that's interesting. That was some new piece of things to work on. Ah. Where am I? What was the next one? Oh, you are. checking changes when exporting. And, and, and we did, right? Uh, I, I can come to my site. Let's say, and let's stay on this example. I, I only want to actually think caching because I have a good caching strategy and that's something else that I plan to present later, but there, there are, and I'm working here, but at the same time, at the same time, I was looking at some other stuff, and let's say I come here, and I came to content type, and I went into the fields of basic page, because I was playing with it, I was learning, or something, and then, yeah, I changed this to two. Any changes? The changes is relevant. In this case. In general, in this case, yes. But what is important is I'm working on a ticket. I know what I'm working on. Cash. As you learn more, as you work more with Drupal, you will know what configurations you change or what configurations should appear. But if I were to run right now, the C is be aware of this. Sometimes this list is big, and people do not take a look. They actually run the command drush ces dash y. My advice, never, ever, 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 ever do that. Because the freaking body is changing. Why? I don't want that to change. So, I know that I have to either go and fix it, and, 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 and I have two ways to do it. I can go back and see if that is already part of this, because I, I want to demonstrate that. Yeah, yeah. I, I already did it before. That's when I go like, but I only want system performance. So I will go and surgically go to the export, Go to single configuration, get the system performance, copy the content of the file, and paste it in nano, in B, in text editor, in notepad, in whatever you want to use for text edit. And just delete the content of the file, and paste what I want to export, and then I can import configuration. So let's do that, because I don't want the field, and I don't have any idea what that field is. And, and it can be a very big change, or it cannot. So I, 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 don't, I don't even want to uh, think about that. So if I go back to here, system performance is again different. You 
and let me see. Yeah, if I refresh, feel body. Yeah, there it is. Look at that. The differences. I mean, this is an easy change. I could, you know, fix it later. But I don't want to do that. I just, I just, I just want to get rid of that. So I'm going to export only one item. I never, I don't recommend anybody using the full archive exporting or importing. I use import and export to do kind of surgically changes in configuration, one configuration at a time, one or two. And it's system performance. There you go. And I'm going to get the whole thing. And I'm going to copy the content. I know the name of the file already, systemperformance.yaml. I see it here. So I'm going to say, uh -uh, don't export that. I'm going to change the content of this. I'm going to go to the top. And that's just because I use VI, which I love is simpler. And I'm going to paste the content. This came from my site, from my active configuration. Now I'm making it exactly the same in active and stage, correct? And my field body, how do I fix my field body? What, what can I do here to fix it? My system performance is perfect. Now I can send the configuration to the active, because the boss is stage. If anything happens, a stage is the right one. So we have a mess. Field body is a mess. It, and it sometimes is like 10, 25 that you see, OK, these are different. Nobody has done anything. We're going to go back to the last release. The boss is your stage. So the big command here is sim. Boom. And now it's going to tell me, yeah, you have some difference on field body. Like, please, yes, please fix it for me. And again, as I said at the beginning, do it again. Because you want to get this. You want to make sure that nothing kind of, it, it gets weird sometimes. I mean, it's just like, it doesn't change. And you export it. No, it's still different. And you export it. You go, these two lines that are swapped. So you have to manually do what we just did. Copy from active to here so they are not swapped anymore. And it doesn't get corrected. Sometimes it gets corrected if you export, but if you've been working in other things, the export can mess up what you have in the hard drive. So you don't want to do that. I mean, I tell all the developers, you will develop criteria. The more you play with configurations, you're going to develop. Like, I need to be careful here because I touch too many things. I only want one exported. So I'll do it from the UI kind of clinically get it out and put it in there and then import configuration and clean up my site and I'm good or I need to bring the production database and fix everything. But anyway, that is the basic configuration. And here is where we get into a split and for this I need to be in a slideshow. So the challenge now is to keep the configuration clean on every environment. Okay, so um, what is config split? Let's talk about it. It's one of the most popular strategies right now. It's not the only one. It's, but it's the most popular by far among my customers and everybody that I've talked about in uh, uh, Drupal. It's based on using the config split module. What it does is separates configuration items that need to be different in some cases. What are good examples of that? Environment specific is the typical example. As I mentioned, I want local to enable develop. I have a strategy in Composer, and that's not part of this presentation. I mean, you can Composer require develop, or you can Composer require develop dash dash dev, so develop actually does not get installed in the code that goes in production, only in the code that is more developed. But that's not, but still have to enable it or not, right? So local needs develop. Probably local needs configuration of, right? You uh, caching of, sorry, because you don't want caching over there because it's gonna be fun. An aggregation of. An aggregation of and that stuff, right? Uh, another one when you have a multi-site, uh, there are different ways to do it. One of the philosophies that 
But what people like to use is, since I have a base code, I'm also going to have a base configuration of everything, all the content types are the same, for example. And then just change what is specific for that site. A uh, good example that I can think of, if you're using the color module, the configuration of colors. That can be a reason to have a, 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 a multi-site reality in practice on everybody in my customers and that I know that have multi-sites. They actually completely break, which you also can do. Just telling each site to store the configuration in a different place, the configuration. So no split for per site, but you may want that. Uh, installation provider specific. You may want to have configuration. And actually, when you have an installation, it has a config folder that gets imported on Drupal and CIM. And it's the first thing that gets imported. One of the first ones. Or feature specific? I don't know. Like, there is a features module, and I believe it does some sort of a split, but you could have a split for the article where you only have in that split the article content type. And if you have, you can turn it on and off. I mean, it could be. That's why it's in a question mark. And usually, what we recommend is having some sort of organization like this for the splits. Do the splits, and you're going to see in a minute. You can tell it where to store that splits configuration. So you have the default, which is everything. And you have the environment lock up the test product. And then you have per size, size, and different configurations per size. But how do a split work? Uh, let's talk about that. There are two types of splits that you can do in a configuration. And here is where it gets tricky, and the most important part of your strategy. There is partial configuration, a split, partial split, and there is complete split. We will see a little, have a little animation for that. <laughs> uh, you can only be partial or complete. Meaning, if I completed the split something, if I go and put in complete split system performance job, right? If it is complete, it completely disappears from default. So, if I want Pro to have caching, then I need to have a system performance YAML inside this split with caching. And since I did it complete, I'm going to need one for test, I'm going to need one for dev, and I'm going I'm to need one for local. Because it was complete. It, it will be clear in a second. But you cannot have it both ways. Um, it has to be treated as complete on the other, so it says that. And you can also put in the splits enabling modules and teams for that particular split when it's active. If that happens, the whole configuration of that modular team becomes a complete split. So if you put devel module inside the local split, the devel.settings.jaml, which is the basic configuration, will never exist here. Because it's a complete split. So how do partial and complete works? Is Let's start with partial splits. So usually you have your site, right? Inside one. You have your default config. We're going to use as example three of them which is core extension, which is all the modules that are enabled and teams. System performance, which is your caching configuration and aggregation and all that. And shield settings, because you're using the shield module because I'm protecting prod right now because I'm still in development. We're not out yet, They're not released. And you have your split. We're going to create our first split, death. And I have my split for site, which we're not going to touch right now. But I want to partially change performance. Because on dev, I do not want caching. Right? So I create a split. And this is how a split looks in JAML form. We'll see in, in the UI at some point. So it's saying that it's called dev, right? That 
the storage of this configuration is going to be in the config environments dev folder. And it can be whatever you want. This is just a recommendation for your order. If not enabling any module, if not enabling any team, if not complete splitting anything, if partially splitting system performance. What that means is that my default folder and my dev folder, each one is going to have a system performance file. The one in the default folder will look like this, where I have beautiful caching configuration, and I'm pre-processing in true, and I'm gcping in true, and I'm doing all caching configurations are on, right? That's my default. If I import into local, and local does not have the dev configuration active, the dev split active, the system performance will get imported is this one. And it actually is the first one that is going to be imported. When I run config import, that one gets imported. But inside my dev split, nope. inside my dev split, whoo, too much. I'm going to have a system performance that looks like this. No caching, no preprocess for CSS. Right? So when I import and the dev split is active, everything in the default is going to import. All of this is going to import. And then it's going to be replaced with the one in dev. And that is called a partial split. So if I import configuration in local, I get this one. If I get configuration in prod, I get this one. If I import configuration in dev, I get this one. That is a partial split. Is this with the config split module? Yes, and correct. It, and it knows, I mean, you basically uh, define gonna, where the things yeah, are. Well, yes, correct. And we're going to talk about that. And you need to have a strategy. Part of your strategy is how do I enable the right split when I need it? Yes. You need to, you need to do that somehow. Uh, Akia has environment detector, and I believe environment detector works also in Pantheon, but Pantheon gives you tools on variables on the server, so you can actually go in settings.php and do a, a good case and say, if this is prod, enable the prod split, if it's dev, enable the dev split, if it's not local, enable the local, if it's test, enable the test, if it's not, disable all of them, right? You, you, you can make that decision later. It depends on what you're hosting. But this, it's important to understand what is the difference between partial and complete, because this is one of the crashing moments for most developers. I don't know why, but it is. So what is a complete split? That's my other style. This happened when I put a single configuration name in the complete split in my, in my split, or when I put a module or a theme. It becomes a complete split. How does it work? We have the same. We have my default config. I have my three configurations. I have my dev. Remember that that was partial. And I have my site. I'm just going to use site because. Um, I try to just have another split. Let's say that <laughs> I want to protect site one. So nobody goes in there because it's just a new site. I'm developing. I'm going to publish it, but I don't want nobody. I'm going to use shield, right? In this example, I don't need shield by default, enable or anything, right? Because my local, my dev, I don't, I don't want to protect them for any reason. So your split will look like this. And what do you have? It's going to be called site one. It's going to have the module shield enabled. And if you ever seen core extensions or modules, this is the way. So it goes alphabetically, unless you change this number. So if you have a module that is 10, it's actually be enabled after all the zeros. If the origin gets enabled, little piece of information. 
I don't have anything in the complete list or the partial list, but since I split the module, the shield settings dot jaml becomes a complete split. How does that look? It looks like this. The shield dot settings is gone from default because it's a complete split. And now it should be in the folder of my split. <coughs> Not affect the core extension. No, because it's via the split. Now, this means also that's a good point that in here I should not have the shield module. In that. In anywhere. In core extensions, the shield okay. module should not exist. Right. Because I am splitting. And that's a good point, and I should put that in the presentation. <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> But that's important. Um, <clears throat> so that is the difference between partial and complete. Now, if I want to create a parallel split, and I want to also have shield in there, now I have to make it a complete split. Because it was already made complete in one of the splits. Does that make sense? It cannot go partial. I cannot just put another shield dot settings in there. I actually, another split that wants to use the shield module, I have to do exactly this. And you said that's for any module or theme? Theme that you enable on a split. Okay. Or for any configuration that you put in this list. Okay. If you're just using the configuration. That means, in that case, if you're only using it here, that means the module should be enabled here. Okay, yeah. Somewhere. It has to be enabled. It's not going to enable it if you just put the configuration. OK, so that's the difference. That's the main concept that you have to keep in mind when you're using a split for configuration strategy. You're going to have different options. GTN is one where you either split it really well, or I'll give you another option. But uh, if you work with Acquia, Acquia Connector, when it was actually a thing for configuration, you don't want to have the configuration in your default because then your dev, test, and prod have the same ID and they are not the same. With examples like that or anything that is, you know. Devel. So, um, what are the challenges on following this strategy? And the first one is how to enable the virus kit. And that's something that you have to figure out depending on your hosting, depending on your things that you do. I have a little site in Hostinger, and what I have, for example, is an if file exists, and I have one for prod, and one for settings.prod.php, or settings.dev.php, or settings stage, and in that one, I, it's not in Git, I put it manually, and I enable the script. Right? So, you have, uh, you, can, you could do it each, each, you, using feature splits, so it's actually a feature that you will go and have to turn on on the splits and manually turn it on and then export it as active or not. Using the right split for the environment of the multi-site, like for example, Acquia, uh, this is open source, it used to be in BLT, is a settings recommendation which actually creates like a, a an order for configuration. So in the config split, this is this is what I wanted to show, the code. In the complete split, they come and try to find this is the, the, the prefix of how the configuration is called and then find the environment detector that works on Acquia. On on each split, uh, it's gonna say config name of the split dot environment. So dev, test, and the basic environment, and just set it to true, the one that we want. It, it, this is an example of how that code enables the right split for the right split in Acre Cloud. You can do it anything you want, way you want. Your main line of code is without variables. Is this? You need to put in a settings file, so in your local, settings.local, right? That's the right place to put config 
config underscore split dot config underscore split dot local. That's the name of your uh, splitting configuration, local, right? The status, true. So if you have it hard coded in your settings.php, local.php, local split will always be enabled in, uh, in your local. Do not trust, and that's another advice in your management. Do not trust that I'm going to remember which one I say, and then I'm going to go to production and put the production split active, because then how do you track that over there is active? Because the split is the one that is going to allow you to track that, but you're enabling via configuration. So whenever that somebody exports from local, Pro should be off, so it's going to be exported as well. And there is no system to keep that different. So my advice, hard code it. Via settings.php and some sort of environment detection or site detection or whatever is the case for your splits. Or if you have, a, do you, if you have separate environments and they each have their own settings.php, can you do it yeah. that way? Yeah, exactly. Oh, okay. That's exactly. If you already have a way to run different settings.php per environment, Magic, put it in there. Enable the right split. Okay. Uh, there are modules for profiles. If you want to do a profile, and uh, you have to be careful with hard coded configurations. Uh, those are one of the challenges. When you hard coded something uh, for any module, uh, an API key, um, uh, what's a good example? In API, list configurations is that they are coded usually. If local, you ever like local keys, local keys, stuff that you hard coded. Be aware of that because it can become a problem with your configuration management. So, say you hard coded, and let's stay on the system performance. You hard coded the max age in your settings.php. You have different settings.php per environment. You wanted to make sure, or you had a very intelligent developer that wanted to make sure that in each one of them, they have their own max age, right? Now, you did not reflect that in your split. And you tell the local split, or the dev split, to have a different system performance. When you import, since it's hard coded, configuration management is always going to detect that it's different. Because the settings.php takes precedence. Always. Always. So you import, but then the active configuration is going to take the value of the settings.php. And let's say that says zero. You have in your settings in system performance 2600. And then you import again. Configuration management is going to say, I have 2600 on the stage. Active is zero. It's different. Import. Done. Import. Let's check. Import. Configuration management will say system performance is different. And it's because it's hard coded. So that's one of the biggest challenges that you can have. Can I, what happens to me in my day to day working? So every time I like pull live database and I start working with my main branch, I have to run Drush Sim mm -hmm. because I need my configuration from the code to my database. Mm -hmm. and, and then I start working. At the beginning, we have many issues because developers were just exporting and not looking what they were exporting and putting that on Git. That's a mess. Mm -hmm. So because whatever is in Git is the boss. So yeah. you have to be careful. Yeah. Now, when you are working with the splits, it's easy to change the local, right? If I create a local, we'll see it in a second. I create a local split. I enable it by default, right? And I make a change. For system performance for local, I said to local, partially split this. It's easy, whenever I export, configuration management is aware of the split, right? And we'll export system performance to the local storage, right? But if I want to do something for prod and I'm working on local, I don't have it enabled by default because it's not the right environment. I should not have it enabled. And config split has a special command for exporting and importing configuration of a given split. But it can become a mess because if they they intersect local and prod, 
right? If you have a complete split, they will intersect because it's a complete, you have to have it on both different. Um, something can be exported wrong. So sadly this change, it, was, it used to be easier via a drush command, but that's when I call use the pretend game. Tell your local to pretend to be the other environment. And uh, we'll see in a second how to do that. Yes. So more challenges is only export what you need. We talk about manually exporting uh, and or using Git, right? So remember that uh, experiment that we made, so I don't need this anymore, open big, that I came and uh, here it is, and I change the field, and I'm gonna do that very quick again, so we can see the difference, 12, yeah, that's crazy, I don't know why I wanna have 12 bodies, uh, and then I also come here, and performance, and now it's 12 hours, because yeah, we want more catching. And I save, and I come back here, and I do my dvf drush cex. Oh, did I not save my other change? That's interesting. I needed to refresh. Yeah, that should have been automatic, but it's possible. But I did not save my change, so the structure, content types, I'm actually going to change something different just because, and it's the cooking time that I'm going to edit, tell it to be 11, and save settings. And did not say it's safe, did it's it? It's already doing the edit, so you can't change the card now, but you want to make it unlimited. Oh. Yeah. Now it says. So confirmation, very quick. Okay, now we have an example where I'm just working on caching. We're back to the same example and something else that changed. Right? Uh, we saw how to do it manually and solve that. You know, go to the active, export, get the configuration, copy the content, replace the content of the file, import again, and do it. Right? But you also have Git. Git is your friend. So if we come back here, I'm going to say no to this, and I'm going to do a quick git add and git commit. Just, just so my git doesn't have any other changes, right? Nothing to commit. And I go and do a ddef drush cex, and I went like, yeah, do it. Now I have a problem. Have to file. Well, that's, that's something that is beautiful about the stage being version control. You can come here. Uh, I still haven't found a good graphical interface for Git in my Linux. So I'm going to do it manually and you can Git reset. I think you can use Git Garkin with one account. I can, but I don't like it. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> what is it? Git Kraken. Git Kraken? Oh, okay. I, I think it allows you to have one account on your local for free. If, if Check you want. out or restore. I'm sorry. Uh, restore? Or restore. Oh, thank you. Oh, get res oh yeah, I see what you're doing. That's the one. Thank you. Thank you. But independent of the command, if Git is your friend, I mean, if you exported 20 configurations and you only want one, go reset the others. And if you have source tree or Git Kraken or one of those, you just can highlight them on the start. And you're done. Okay, with the command line, it's just mer merging conflicts. It's, yes. I prefer oh, it's super helpful. Studio. It's super helpful if you and somebody else are working on the same thing mm -hmm. and you want half of each of them. Git is your friend. Yeah. Now, 
Cherry beans. Okay, so you just choose all the things and then but it works. That's pretty much the case okay. yeah. on, on the study. Okay, so challenges that you have very quick is multiple people working together. That's going to be a mess. Yeah. People changing the same configuration. <laughs> import configuration where code is deployed. Always import configuration where code is deployed. Create something, automations, tasks, whatever. Careful with the update of core and other modules. I had a customer. They came to me. Carlos, we just moved into 10.2, and now we have a 500. Show me the 500. Let's find the error. Um, set value expired, underscore, set underscore value underscore expired. I believe it's the value that was, like Drupal was, I don't know what that is. Error. <laughs> Look into it. Set value expired, whatever it was, was part of system performance that was taken off between 10.1 and 10.2. When you update, hook updates wrong, it does it on your active, right? It does it perfectly in your active. But this customer did not export configuration after the update. So, their stage system performance had the key. They were very good at having this, importing the configuration, on deployment, so when they deployed 10.2, they imported configuration, they imported the key, and the sideline. Uh. So, always export configuration when updating core and modules. Especially, most exactly when there are database updates. Is it always ex exported after update? After yeah, update? you run composer update, you run uh, you, you see that there are modules that are being updated, you run DrawShop DB, and yeah. something showed up. As you gain experience, you can get more, you can get better and say, nah, this, this is not even uh, configuration. Yeah. Yeah. But just for safety, there is a database update, export configuration immediately. So never, ever, 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 ever do update as part of another task. This I am working on this new content type, and since hey, so if the, there is the new version, I'm going to include it. No. no. Updates should be their separate. own task, separate, so when you finish, everybody can rebase and grab the new version, the new configuration changes that were introduced by that update, and you are not going to have a whole day of a side debt. Because you have one extra, or we're missing one. Yeah. If you're missing one, if, if the case was different, they didn't took one key but added a new one, you're going to get the default value. And maybe a key that you actually want to configure. That new key. Uh, in 9.4 to 9.5, or 9.3 to 9.4, I believe it was, they changed the name of a key. On, of a very important configuration. They changed the name to make it more specific. If you did not export configuration, that particular thing will not work anymore. Because you will have the one that has nothing to do with it, that nobody's gonna look at it because it's trash, and you will have the default of the new names. So be aware of that. And there can be other examples. I'm not gonna go through them because I think I am so late. Yeah. <laughs> Under five minutes. <laughs> okay, um, split examples, this, this, is, this, is so, this is so much to see, so, oh my god, what is, if I go to the UI very quick so you can see a split, so what I'm going to do is enable the split, the, the, the dev, drosh, PM, and... Uh, Give me a second. I don't remember if it's like this. Thank you. If not, config it, Raja. If. Come on, come on, come on. <laughs> awesome, beautiful. That means that I can come here. Other config split. 
I'm going to call it local. And I'm going to say if in dot dot slash config slash and slash local. You need to have this folder in, already created in the code, so you know. Uh, I don't care if it's active or not, but I'd rather create them unactive and activate them via settings.php, as I mentioned. And I'm not going to add anything right now, but I just want to save it. So this is a split in the UI. It's telling you what's preview, what is exported. Uh, I'm going to give you a little preview, and these are the values. And then I should have it here in, in the code or not already. Should I? No, because no, I haven't exported, so I did a change. Oh, come on. Somewhere. <laughs> it was way in the beginning. There it is. So I have the naming of config split, the cooking time that we never fixed, <laughs> and the config split local. So I'm going to say yes. I'm going to re-restore that little file. And since I restored it, but it was already, just to make sure everything is OK, because I'm sure my stage is OK. Cleaned up, and I can see config, config default, config split local. And that's how it looks. So I have my name, the status is not active, my ID is local, label is local, uh, it's stackable and not patching, I don't touch this, I mean, not really very much the folder and what is going to be split. So what I'm going to tell this split right now is to partially split Oh, it's already. System dot performance. I did a change in a stage. I need to ex import configuration to avoid any issues. And now, since it's partially, I need to make sure that my configuration is enabled by default. So what I do is, oh my god, this looking this way is that in my local file I have this empty config, config split, config underscore split, put dot config underscore split dot local, which is the name of my split, status true. So even though my configuration says status false, when I do that, and I refresh this, I'm going to go back once, back to refresh. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, it's active in settings PHP, but it's default status. It's inactive, so it's active. So if I make a change, so right now, and this is, a, I'm going to try to do it as quick as I can, because I know this is the important part. If I look at config, oh come, oh come on, come on, config, and local, there's nothing. So I go in configuration, performance, yeah, this is local. Now I'm acting as local. Because I told the split to, to, to uh, split this configuration, right? Partially. Save it. Export. It's not going to tell me anything. But now I have the config split for system performance. And this config split patch is part of that. The patching is true. So they're not storing the whole file, but just the differences. 
Ah. Just, just to make it easier. This is new and configure split. But if you want it or not, you can turn it on and off over there. But now I have something for per system performance here, right? But I still have config again config default system. No, careful, don't don't be like that. <laughs> I still have the full file in default because it's partially split. If I wanted to have a different for prod, and this is what I call the pretend game, and I think that's the last part, I mean, like the really last part, which is the pretend game, right? I could go to my settings.file local and just temporarily or in a better way do this. Oh, okay. And now, the one that is enabled hard coded is prod, I can go into my site actively, the Drupal UI, change everything that I want in the split of prod, export configuration, and then remember to come back here and make it right. So it's the local. So that way, when I do this, I'm telling the site pretend to be prod for a second, because I want to also create a split that I did not, but we don't have time, but it's the same like the local, and I'm going to add system performance there too, and I'm going to have a, a bigger catch. Yeah. That's the way I play the pretend game nowadays. So you are working on your local, but you are using production your, configuration on your local. So it gets enabled in production when you deploy to production because you have your way to enable the prod split on production. So very quickly, because it's this, uh, ignoring and excluding is very important. Sometimes you need to ignore those configurations that are uh, hard-coded for some module. You have the Google Tag Manager, it's terrible. You probably want to ignore that because trying to keep it right for them, for the test, for local, it became for my customers a nightmare. Web forms, because web forms are YAML forms, uh, if you know the story when Jason, Jason? Yeah, Jason is his name, uh, created, when we moved to Drupal 7 to Drupal 8, web forms never moved. The D7 module never moved to D8. This guy, Jason, he created YAML forms, and it was so good that it became web form. He took over the web form space. Oh, really? I and created a uh, grid path and everything, the community created that. So web forms are YAML forms, so you have to ignore web forms. Web, the, the web forms dot something asterisk, you can ignore them. How do you ignore? Using the config ignore module. When you can use a pattern, a, 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 a regular pattern, web form dot asterisk, and it gets ignored. It doesn't get imported, it doesn't get exported, and config management is, is not going to care if it's changed or not. It's not going to look at it. That is if your content editors are creating forms. You need to ignore that. Yeah, if or somebody's if creating it's... web forms. Um, because web forms are actual content. So in general, you should do that. Yeah. There is the config exclude, right? And, and, and it's explained here the regular patterns of whatever, whatever you want. And after you change config, ignore, you need to export configuration if you do it on the side. I mean, I, I believe that's already. Config exclude is something that was a module and became part of core, and it's pretty easy. On settings.php, I can tell Drupal to ignore a set of modules. So they will never be taken into account for configuration management. They will not have to do with anything that we have talked about. You cannot split them. You cannot use them. It's not going to check if it's enabled or not. Careful with that. It makes that that module is managed manually. Every time in production or local or dev or is not going to be in the configuration management strategy. So like Devel, we don't need any more. Uh, Devel is better split. Better split. Yeah, because then you will not have Devel for sure in your local. Every developer, every time, will have to check if wants to or not. It depends on your strategy. I don't recommend that one. Google Tag Manager excluded and manage it. Uh, probably you only want to manage it in prod, not have it in any other place. 
because it's the Google stuff. But to finish, no, that's up. Other modules, new modules out there that I like, but I don't know if they are good for production. So you can find them by the name. Config overlay, that's a cool one. You remember the list of all the configuration? It's like 100 plus, hundreds of, of, of files. Well, Config overlay keeps track of what you actually changed and only exports what you actually change. If a configuration has not been touched and it's still the module or core default, that file does not get exported until you change it. So you go from hundreds to tens, twenty. Uh, config synchronizer, remember the problem with the key and the, the, something changed in the module? Okay, config synchronizer is a good one, but uses like other five modules that are also so interesting. Take a look at it, it's still alpha, but that keeps a snapshot of your configuration. If the module changes up or deletes something, it allows you to synchronize it. Boom! Make it equal and then export, and you have merged what you forgot to do when you did the update and did not export configuration. Config Inspector is something new, it's an initiative for Drupal and it's adding the way to every module that provides configuration to validate configuration. So it will allow you to make sure that all the modules you have enabled, the configuration is perfect, it's not missing anything and it has the right values. Config Layers is going to be a new strategy and it's supposed to load the configuration via layers. I have not used it or know about this module too much. Mention it because supposed to be a replacement or an alternative to config split and it, you, you can read what it that. Config single is port is an actual drush command to import just one configuration. Oh. And can be interesting. Yes. In the yes. I, yeah. So actually, it, no, what it does is add a button, sorry, I forgot. Add a button on the single export to export, instead of have to copy and then oh. copy, just like I'm gonna just do system performance, export, and then we'll put it in the right place. Oh, okay. And web, web form config ignores, I think it's interesting because you, ignoring web forms is a problem. Because you have to ignore the forms, but not the web forms configuration. So be careful with that, it can be a mess if you don't do it, but I think if a module does it, better. And that's it. Only over 20 minutes. Very worth it.